Good morning, brothers and sisters, and welcome to this week's service. My name is Tabang, and it is always a pleasure for me to lead you in a space of worship. If you are joining us for the first time, you are welcome, and may you be blessed. Uh, and you are also welcome to go through our channel and check our previous um, uh, uh, videos and services. But also, if you'd like to come into the church and worship with us, we are also open for physical worship. And we also bless God for the opportunity to worship him um, virtually and physically. Let us now begin this service by lighting the candle together. And so we light this candle together today as a sign of thanking God for the gift that he gave us. And that is the gift of Jesus Christ who came to also be the light. And so as this light shines, may Jesus also be the light of our lives and may he shine in our hearts. And let us pray together. And so Heavenly Father, we thank you for a beautiful and awesome God that you are. We thank you, Lord Almighty, that there is no one like you, Heavenly Father. And we thank you, Lord God, that you continuously show us that there is no one like you. And we give you thanks, Lord God, for the blessings upon our lives, for the gift of life, the gift of safety, the gift of meals, the gift of friendships, the gift of family, the gift of every big and small things that you give us, Lord God. And may we use those things to reflect and see that you are God who is the giver. And as a result of the fact that you gave, may we come to you with thanksgiving, Heavenly Father. And Heavenly Father, we also want to use this moment, Lord God, to ask for forgiveness for sins that we have committed against each other and your creation and you, Lord God. We are also praying for the Spirit, Lord God, to forgive one another as you constantly and continuously forgive us, Lord God. We also pray, Lord God, with those that are grieving the losses of their loved ones. We pray, Lord God, for those that are asking you for help. We pray with those that are asking you for various things, Lord God, those that need you the most, Lord God. We pray and leave them up into your care and love, Heavenly Father. Assure them of your love and your presence. And at the end, Lord God, we pray together the prayer that Jesus, your son, taught his disciples. And our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen, friends. If it's your birthday today, happy birthday to you. And if you've also celebrated a birthday during the week, um, happy birthday to you. And we pray God's richest blessings upon your life. And now let us worship God in song. As the
We now turn to scripture and find a reading for this week. We read from the gospel according to Matthew and we read from chapter 6 verses 19 through 24. The heading of the passage reads, Treasures in Heaven. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and vermin destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. This is the word of God and thanks be to God. Friends, we are on our second week of our five weeks preaching series on the gift of giving. And we began this preaching series last week when we reflected on the gift of giving, the God who gives. And we read from Genesis chapter 1 where we saw God give us himself through creation and also when the relationship was messed up by sin, we saw God give us his only son who is Jesus Christ to, rem to remedy and repair the relationship. And today we are back to continue on our preaching series on the gift of giving. And today we talk about money and God. And also our theme is titled Addressing Money as a Rival to God. Addressing money as a rival to God. Now, the theme for today suggests that there needs to be an address to address the rivalry between God and money. Also, it's then difficult because if the theme suggests that there is rivalry between God and money, it means God is on the left and money is on the right. And then they are not go in the same direction, but they are on the opposing views. So where do I begin? Let me begin by the statement that we all know. Money makes us happy. Money makes us happy. We wake up, we go to work, and we go and work for this money so that we are able to get whatever that we want. Most of you guys are still at school. Your parents work hard to make sure that they afford things for you and the general household. So money then becomes an important part of our day-to-day -day living. And when you look at life, majority of things that we need require money for us to procure them. We get frustrated when we don't have money. Because it feels like we don't have something that is very important. Money is important to individuals. Money is important to families. Money is important in relationships. Money is important in the life of the country. And money is definitely important for the whole world. And every now and then, when we look at the lives that we live, ultimately we want to get money so that we are able to afford the things that we have. And on the same breath, some will even go an extra mile to cheat other people to get more money. Some will also go an extra mile to do other wishy-washy things or dubious things to, to get money because we want money. Sadly, in the process of us attaining money, other people will even resort to other things to get money. And so Jesus Christ is now teaching in the mountain. 
There are people sitting around him. And Matthew then says to us that Jesus Christ teaches about various things. And in chapter 6, the beginning, Jesus talks about giving to the needy. Then Jesus continues then to teach about prayer. Jesus continues to teach about fasting. And then we get to the passage that we read when Jesus talks about treasures in heaven. And so Jesus then says to the hearers of his word, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and and vermin can destroy or where thieves can break in and steal. And so Jesus then says to the hearers that do not store your riches in here on earth because they can be destroyed or they can be stolen. Jesus Christ is actually not saying they should not have riches on this earth, but he is trying to find balance to say, your life is not only the life that is focused on the things that you do on earth, but your life also should have a view that beyond the world that we are living in today, there is another place called eternity and how you live your life today should also be an evident that when you get to heaven you have stored up the treasures and so when jesus then continues to say that store store your treasures up in heaven live your lives having a relationship with god So that when you get to eternity, you are having a place guaranteed in heaven. So basically what Jesus Christ is saying is that the things that we are storing up on this side, we will leave them this side. So there needs to be a balance between what we do here and what we are supposed to do in our spiritual lives. And so lastly, Jesus then says to them, no one can serve two masters. You will hate one and love the other. You cannot serve both money and God. Jesus is not saying do not have money. He's saying you cannot serve money. And so there's a difference between saving money and having money. Saving money means that you are sacrificing yourself for money. You are a servant of money. You Everything that you do is for money. But having money simply means going to work and attaining money. Living within your means. Not being able to or not worrying about what sh- who should I cheat or what system should I cheat to have money. And so we can't serve both money and God. And so the best way is to serve God and to earn our money. The world that we live in today, most of the challenges that we are faced with as the world, they are based on money. People traffic other human beings because they want money. People sell drugs that destroy young people because of money. People sell jobs and employment because of money. People sell qualifications because they don't want money. People even sell their bodies for money. People do bad things for money. People, parents even sell children for money. And so that, those are examples of what happens when you are saving money. You do not even worry about Who thinks what? What life am I destroying? All you want to do is that you need to save money. And so the topic for today then says to us that because God is the God who gives, we need to save them. We need to save him and not money. Because the Bible says the root of all evil is the love of money. And so it becomes difficult and dangerous when one wants to go or is willing to go an extra mile to get money. Such a person is dangerous because they lose who they are, they lose their sense of community, they lose the sense of respect for others, they lose their spirituality. All they want is money. We have people on a daily basis killing other people for money. We have people do Corruption for money. We have people stealing for money. We have all of these things because 
People want to save money. But let us save God. Because he gave. And as a result, we then realize that we are grateful. There are many people who have money, but they cannot sleep. Because of how they got it, it's not the right way. There are many people who have money. They cannot wink. Because chances are by the time they open their, ma- their, their eyes, they will not have enough. And at times, this love of money makes us not even enjoy life because we want more and more and more and more. And when our plans run out, we opt for other ways. But then God is saying, do not store your treasures on earth, but store them in heaven. Have a relationship with me. And also, you can't save. We can't save two masters, friends. It's either money or God. But I pray and plead with you that may it be God that we serve and not the money. And I pray that God give us the sense of authenticity and assurance by simply having a relationship with him. And let us pray together. Oh, Father in heaven, we thank you for your word that comes as a reminder to us, Lord. Young as we are, old as we are, there are many masters in front of us. We've got cell phones that have become masters. There's money in front of us. There are jobs. There are friends. There are many masters in our lives. But thank you for the reminder, Lord God, that we can't serve two masters. It's either you or the other masters. And I pray through the power of your Holy Spirit that it's you, the only master that we seek to serve, that we seek to live for, that we seek to emulate and embrace. Give us the strength, Lord God, to do this journey, knowing that you are with us. And as we look forward to the following week, Lord, may your grace sustain us, may your grace protect us, and may your grace, Heavenly Father, be with us in the journey. Jesus' name, amen. Amen, friends, and let us bless each other with the words of the benediction. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore. Amen.